nurse at the moment. She may get a promotion in the near future. Her at Emily Blackwell's um, School for Nursing in Philadelphia. And when I am not working in a dressing station like this one where I just do normal nursing duties, I work in the field hospital as a ward matron. And that means that I take care of about 30 men who've been sent back behind the lines to recover so that they can either go back to duty or they can be shipped home. Um, other than that, my regular nurses, nursing duties are basically the same as uh, Miss Mueller's, and so she will tell you what, what the nurses do in general. Hi. We will leave it open for questions and answers if we have a little bit of time, and you guys can, can ask questions. Right now, I understand we have a man who's moving in the back side. Oh, 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 oh. You're gonna, you're where, gonna where die. Where are you hit? Where are you hit, sir? <laughs> Right in the stomach. Oh in the stomach. Yeah, the man in the stomach. stomach. Let's get him up real easy. Uh, we'll put him up right away uh, with chloroform. Uh, Where's the hospital uh, school? He's not here yet. He's, he's not, not here yet. yet. Okay, we're going to have to do this for long. Who wants to do anesthetic? I'm going, going home. home. All right. I'm going home we'll to see the right maker. Yes, sir. I'm going home to see the Okay, let's see what we have. Let's see what we have. Oh, let's put him out first. Right. I can't do anything without that. Oh. His pulse is strong right now. Okay, I want you to keep his forehead. Right now, the patient appears to be stable. We don't know how long that situation is going to last. And he appears to be shot through the abdominal wall here. I can't find anything. Let's see what we have. We're going to insert the scalpel at an angle. We're going to cut a straight line all the way up the sprinkler, the medium line. Okay, it appears here we have, and what I can see, a perforated bowel, so we're going to have to try to reset the reconnect that back together. I don't know how successful we're going to be. First, we have to find out where the perforation is. He's got some drainage from his bowels, as you can see here. Um, which means there could be some infection happening yourself. From tech, you have a bayonet. Uh, this rifle's been through the Civil War. This bayonet is an Enfield uh, bayonet manufactured during the Civil War, but it's never, ever been used. Now, uh, I've reenacted with this. And I've reenacted with, show us your um, replica bayonet. The replica <coughs> bayonet is pretty close and it's pretty sharp. And, but what I noticed is that the original bayonet is even sharper. And to show you, just to demonstrate, um, I, when we stack our arms and we hang our, and we hang our, uh, coats and our leather equipment on our arms. We make the pyramid stack and we take a break and we hang our leather belts on here and then we uh, hang our coats and our hats on there. And when I came back to get my rifle, I found out my coat that was hanging on the point was really down here. And so I didn't, I hadn't realized how sharp this was. So I'll show you how sharp that is. It slides through anything like butter. And somebody, I had, I used two layers of cloth here, and they said, well, that's not thick enough. You should make it thicker. So I made it four times thicker, and it slides right through like that. That slides in and out of your clothes. There's no stopping it. Yes? Make it two times more thicker. You want to go thicker again? Oh, you're a tough customer. Okay, this is eight times thick now. What was this? Close to there. Now, it's sharp. I have a German bayonet. German rifles and weapons were imported. And Austrian rifles and, and weapons were imported. And French weapons were imported. And there's something different about these bayonets. This is a three-sided bayonet, and this one is. But the blades, are the sides are different. The German bayonet has flat sides. And the British and American bayonet has uh, concave sides. And there's a difference, and there's, it's an important difference. When 
This bayonet, the German bayonet, was dropped into my victim over here. It goes in and it gets stuck, and I can't get it back out. So he's dead, and I gotta stomp on the dead guy to get my bayonet back. But with with these bayonets, with the concave grooves, the blood starts running through the grooves, and the blood starts will lubricate that. And so that's why you can slide your victim on and off. You can. Get to put your bayonet in and out, in and out, and get it back real easy. This is the refreshment stand that is selling Civil War food. They're pretty busy, and kids are taking a break around here for one of their times where they can sit and enjoy the food and get refreshed. Okay, let's get a picture of the food here. Here's your hard pack. Let's see what else they got. Oops, no, that doesn't look like Civil War. We know how to make Lemonade, though. Two lemonades. Two lemonades. Ma'am? Yes. Okay, this is a group that is learning how the Civil War children played games. This game in particular is called Graces, and it is a game that is mostly played by ladies. However, occasionally you'll see a man and a woman playing it together, but never two men together. And it was to teach the ladies how to be graceful. Two hoops that are wrapped in pretty color ribbons using something like what drumsticks to throw it back and forth from one another. It doesn't look too graceful right now but they're trying. Nice job! <laughs> Here we have a well-known game, Tug of War. Kids really get off on this. They enjoy it a lot. is directed by Ann Essling. <laughs> One, two, three. Here we go. This is the game. Look at them go. They're trying. This is a game that never tires. Every generation seems to enjoy it, regardless of age. Okay, here's another game of the Civil War, and it was marbles. Again, something that we've been acquainted with for some time. Playing here in the ground. They use two circles. All right now it looks like they're just using one, but most of the time there was two circles that was used. Here's the Sanitary Commission. This is Carol Lenz. She's speaking with the children here. Wanted to zoom out a little bit so you get the picture of how it looks. Okay, this is one of the school rooms that they're using for um, the children to come and have their lunch. But also, if you look in the background, you'll see that there are displays that each child has been responsible for to create something that has to do with the Civil War. This one here in front of us is Antietam, and they've got a little display down in front. Um, each one. General Pickett. And they show a little scene. And there's just many of these that they've got with Abraham Lincoln. And here's this cabin. Ford's Theater, uh, the assassination of the president. 
just really cute what they do. In the West? So we really feel like they lost the war in the West. Um, men of the second Minnesota came from the Think by River Valley and other parts of Minnesota. So probably was men from this area. Uh, can I show you a little bit of the rifles? Who wants to hear those go off? Okay. We do that right away. loaders, so the men would take out a cartridge, handle, cartridge, handle, cartridge, they tear cartridge, they tear it open, they pour the powder down to the bottom of the barrel, and there'd be a bullet in the top end, charge, cartridge, draw, rammer, then they take the ramrod, ram, cartridge, Prime. Then they take what was called a percussion cap, and it's a little cap that sends a spark into the barrel, igniting the power, and send the projectile off the boat. Shoulder, arm. Company right, left, left, wheel. Company halt. Right, dress. Front. This is going to be loud. Hey! called them trousers, wool trousers. This is a wool jacket. It's a sack coat, four buttons, long sleeve. We'd have a long sleeve shirt underneath. This is a civilian style shirt that I purchased myself. The army would issue a white shirt. We have, this is a forage cap. We also call it a bummer. That's what the army would issue to us. <clears throat> they call it a forage cap because you can flip it upside down. Oh, it's been foraging. <laughs> and, it, and it makes a bucket. And we can pick up things and throw them. But we can pick apples, we can pick berries, we can dig for honey. We would purchase a civilian hat. This is called a slouch. Has a wide brim, keeps the sun off of me, keeps the rain off of me. Keeps me more, more protected. My shoes are leather. They're called brogans, issued by the Army. Hey, thank you. In, in German, say, Danke schön. Now say uh, goodbye. So he leaves. <laughs> really try hard because this man's Irish. So we got to be really careful with, you know, help him out. He's going to tell you what he's carrying for uh, what light marching order is. The marching, light marching order is basically you're only going to be going a short distance. If you were going to be marching for a long period of time, 100 miles or more, you'd be carrying a knapsack and a, maybe a part of a tent to uh, put up some shelter. Light marching order is so, uh, just what it says. Light, so you can march long distance very quickly. 20 or 30 miles a day was not 
uncommon on flat ground, which is a dried cracker, uh, maybe some salt pork. We tried to cook that up before we started marching. And anything else that we felt absolutely was necessary to carry would have to go in this. This is all we have to carry with. What they would give us would be food for four days, usually three to four days of marching. A lot of times we'd have to make that stretch out for a week or so before our supply trains would catch up. And that's why they could talk about having the bummer. So that as you're walking along and kind of hungry, you can dash off to the side and get something to eat. Have a muck cup. Just do everything, all your cooking and eating out of this. Use it to boil our coffee in. If we happen to have some rice or barley, we can cook that up as well with it. If you're, if you keep it on the outside, so as we're marching along, if one of the farmer's wives happens to be sympathetic to the north, she may bring buckets out or there may be a watering trough. We need some water quick. We can dip it out and keep on marching. Cover your ear. Engine company, left wheel, mark. Company, halt, right, dress. Be ready now, kids. Front, fire by company, ready.